Hello, Solar Loon here, and this is going to be a gear in development log video. Um, this one's going to be a little different. For one, it should be in 1080p 60fps, which is going to be surprising. Um, I found basically my my um, HD GameCaster box went out. Um, that's why I was using to capture my gameplay and, and my computer and stuff. Um, and while uh, it went out, um, or it's not out, it's just not really working as well as it should. Uh, and I was looking for a solution and I stumbled on NVIDIA Shadowplay. I thought I'd try it out and surprisingly it can do 1080p 60fps, which is surprising. I think it can actually do 1440p, which is like, wow. Um, so yeah, this should be really, really smooth, really cr crisp and clear video. So that's going to be fun. Um, okay, now this video is going to be a little different in addition to that because uh, this is going to be about planning. I'm not really going to uh, show any progress I've made or am making, but rather I'm going to talk about my plan for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is something that uh, a lot of people kind of get tripped up on and that people kind of, I think, overestimate the difficulty of. Um, and I'm going to talk about how I approach it, uh, have approached it, and will approach it. So the way I used to approach it was something like this, which is an AI director, um, which in uh, under BDX is a component. And uh, that has a main state that basically just runs the, the state that's been assigned to it. Um, and the state that's been assigned to it is basically a direction. Uh, and you can say, what was the direction? It's a behavior. Uh, that's why I used to call it under um, other you know, code bases when I did this before. Um, a direction is just basically something that does something and that runs every frame um, that also can be told if it's done or not. So for example, um, you might want something like, oh, I don't know. Um, okay, say you want to have an enemy, a boss, shoot at the player, jump, shoot in the air, and then when it lands, do some sort of like smash attack, right? Like a, you know, shockwave attack, okay. You want it to shoot, right? So that's a behavior. You want it to jump, and then while it's in the air, you want it to shoot, and then basically wait until it lands, and then do a smash attack, a, you know, a, a ground, ground uh, pound, you know, attack where it smashes the ground and creates a shockwave that the player has to jump over something like that so basically all of those things are individually behaviors shooting jumping uh, attacking you know blocking waiting all that stuff is behaviors so that's what I um, envision for my AI you know system uh, that's also generalized and, and can be used for other games is something that uh, it, it, it takes behaviors that you assign it runs them in sequence or otherwise it's necessary uh, can alter the behaviors provided or, or or the the yeah the behavior of the um boss or or enemy or ai you know entity whatever it is uh as necessary and then can also you know kind of turn off and do different things like that so this was my original approach to this <clears throat> it's not bad uh it works pretty well but there's a couple of things one um the ai direction really could just extend a state rather than a, comp a full component um it, it really that because a component is something that you can add to a game object, right? So an AI director um, is something that runs on a game object that influences it, moves it, changes its state, whatever the case is. It doesn't need um, components of its own to, to like mess around with. It really could just be, you know, a, a behavior or a uh, direction could really just be kind of a container that basically has a main function, right? Has a... Um, a entry function perhaps a exit function and also has a done uh, parameter so that we can tell when when the component is done I'm sorry when the direction or behavior is done um, and that works pretty well and it aligns pretty closely with a state which you can see here which is just a, a, a container that has an entry uh, enter main and exit function uh, when the state is created obviously the constructor is called but when a state is entered it is uh, the enter function is called, the main function is called every frame, and the exit function is called when the state exits. So this setup is very, pretty, pretty closely, uh, you know, good, pretty, pretty solid for a behavior, right? Because you might want to do something when the behavior starts, like start a timer. Uh, you might want to do some stuff when it is running every frame, and you might want to finish up, you know, clean up the behavior so that the next time it gets called, it can start fresh or whatever you need it to be. So I'm gonna remake this so that it works with the state um, behaviors, kind of just working with the state and adding just a done function probably that just returns if the state is, uh, if the behavior is done. And the AI director will just use those directly to um, to influence and to, to alter the game object's course. The original way you can 
see was just kind of as a single line of um, an array uh, here of directions. This was the old system that I made that was just kind of a generic one that I reused for different projects. And now my new approach would probably be a, a track based format and this is basically how it would work. Um, let's have we have a basic enemy which is going to be the top enemy, the top woman enemy. Um, she's going to follow the player, shoot at the player and just kind of generally wait. So following is a uh, action. You can see this. I'm just doing this for visual visualization purposes. Follow, F for follow. And then you have uh, basically nothing else. It, it, all of this, you know, basically is the same one. It's just going to do this and repeat, right? Follow, and then it's going to move on to the next one. There's no next one. So it's just going to repeat from the first uh, of, of the stack, of the, of the track. Now, though, we have another track because we want it to do something else. Oh, wait, that's not right. <laughs> We have another track that we want it to, uh... Alright, I, I messed up the visualization. I was supposed to draw on this frame, I mean on this layer. Um, but yeah, then we have another track which influences how the top woman, you know, does anything else, which in this case is shoot at the player. So she'll shoot, right? And then she'll wait. And then that's the it, uh, that's it for the, for that track. So, we have two different tracks, two different pieces of behavior that we want to run in tandem so each track each time we want to do some you know one set of things in tandem with another set of things we make a new track and if we want to do it in sequence we just add an action to the track so it's a pretty st straightforward and simple uh system and approach um the things that i'm that i don't quite know how to approach yet are random and choice based well I, yeah i guess those are the same random based um tracks so for example you have another track or you 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 know have this track here let's say and you want her to either you want the enemy to either shoot i don't know why it's, i'm missing that key combo uh shoot um f let's say dodge block or um jump right so in this case we want basically the the game um the behavior to choose one of these four so the idea that I'm having so far is just to have a different kind of track. So this is a normal track. This is again just for visualization purposes. But this is a different kind of track. This is a choice track that basically will choose one of the different choices that uh, are set up and that are, uh, I'm sorry, one of the different behaviors, one of the different directions that are set up in there and will basically choose one of them and then it will continue to choose again one of them and and so forth and so on um yeah so that would be a an, an approach to things as well and so naturally it also still you know since we're keeping the same format it would run the same way and work in tandem with the normal track system so that way we can have things like reverse tracks right we can just flip a track oh, right. flip a flip a track <laughs> flip a yet yeah, fine flip a track <laughs> we could flip a track right we can um we could also deactivate a track that didn't work well we could we could deactivate a track it seems like this visualization thing might not actually be working that well but yeah we could de deactivate a track for example if we want to have an enemy only do some things when um it's uh, convenient for the for the player or only when it's convenient for the enemy whatever so that way we can have a little more control over entire behaviors you know basically sequences of behaviors as necessary yeah so those are my ideas and of course you can add tracks and delete tracks at will so if something happens where you know let's say an enemy's health goes down then we can say oh well abandon all the other tracks you have and just create the you know move toward the player and explode track because that's you know as a kamikaze last ditch effort kind of thing uh we can just do that at, at a last resort so that's a, a i think a, a good approach okay so we'll see if i can actually get that to work i'm pretty sure i can and it shouldn't take too long this is pretty basic stuff um and maybe by the end of uh my i don't know the end of the week i'm not sure Hopefully soon I'll have another devlog video where I kind of show the system that I have in place and show it in code, how it uh, is easy to use. Okay, well thank you very much for watching, I've been Solar Loon, and this has been a Gearin development log video. Yes. Alright, you have fun. See ya.